Lecture 2, Module 2, the Define Stage Part 1, Defining the Business Needs. In the first module, we looked at defining the problem. In this module, we'll define the needs, looking at the voice of the customer. And then we'll look at defining the process, and then finally defining the project in Part 2. After defining the problem, the next step is to select a solution or a goal. Just as defining a problem <coughs> is approached systematically, selecting the solution or goal should be done systematically as well. This is called defining the needs. For guidance in selecting a solution or goal, it is wise to listen to the voice of the customer. Voice of the customer. The voice of the customer is the process of gathering information about the actual needs of the customer, not the perceived needs or what you think they are. The voice of the customer process typically involves a series of interviews which focus on the customer's experience with the current process. It is a proactive interviewing process to determine the needs that the customer is aware of and even possibly not aware of. Now this requires careful listening on your part. And also their current unmet desires, they're basically their wish list, what they would like the process to be if they had their others. The solution to the problem and the goals therefore the project should be centered on satisfying the customer's needs and desires. Quality function deployment. After the voice of the customer has been heard and documented, the actual needs of the customer can then be organized and linked to the current process, or in Design for Six Sigma, the future process. Quality function deployment, in a nutshell, takes customer needs and converts them into process specifications. Matrices are created linking the needs to the process. And the phases of QFD are the organization phase, where you're selecting the process to be studied, the descriptive phase, organizing the customer needs with the current process, Breakthrough phase, selecting areas of the process to be improved and determining approaches to achieve the improvements. And the implementation phase, where the project is defined and then executed. And for a nice little video on QFD, uh, there's a link for you. House of Quality. A house of quality is a complex matrix of many criteria, which resembles a house, and that's where it gets its name. And that is used for defining the relationship between the voice of the customer and the process or product's capabilities. It is one part of a quality function deployment, and it can summarize all the matrices developed during a QFD. And to look at a completed house of quality, get a really good idea, uh, you can see something on Wikipedia, very nice. And there's also some free templates for building a house of quality that can be found at that location. Critical to quality tree. The critical to quality tree converts customer needs desires to measurable requirements. This is the linking step between defining and measuring. You don't know what to measure, or, or if it's any good, until you've defined it. So let's say the voice of the customer is looking at a, a product, a blister type product for elderly patients. Now talking to the customer, elderly patients want an easy to use, easy to open package that provides safety for them. Well these can be converted directly into customer requirements, an easy to use, easy to open, safe product. Those in turn can be turned into product specifications. So easy to use could turn into, well, let's put some instructions on the blister pack, very clearly written. Uh, maybe make the font Verdana 18, something that's very easy to read. Easy to open, well, blister thickness, we don't want it too thick so that they can't get them out of there. Uh, so we're gonna have it less than a certain, uh, certain dimension. And the foil tear strength, we wanna be able to tear it out. Uh, many of these patients have arthritis, may not be able to open it. So we don't want the tear strength to be too high. And then safety, we also want the, the blister thickness not to be too thin so that it can be damaged or holes can get in and maybe get contaminated or, or the foil tail strength to be too, uh, too low where the um, uh, you know, maybe cross contamination or uh, tampering could take place. So as you can see, the voice of the customer can di dictate directly what the product specifications are. Critical to quality metrics. A critical to quality metric is a measure of processes quality level. They are derived by comparing process observations against process requirements. These measures are used when defining processes in a Six Sigma project. The Six Sigma team selects the critical to quality metrics that will satisfy the customer's requirements. Typical criti critical to quality metrics are defects per million opportunities, or DPMO, process capability, yield, rolled throughput yield, and Sigma level. Defects in yield. Defects and yield are two different things, but they can be related to each other. Defects are product that you make that, you, that do not make specification and you cannot sell that. Yield is how much product you got out of your, product, your process. 
Now naturally, if you have many defects, your yield will be low. But defects are not the only thing that can affect your yield. Yield can also be affected by manufacturing losses. Um, just moving things around, there are losses. Uh, or for example, product holdup in transfer lines. So it winds up getting washed down the drain and you never recover it. And even by sampling, for instance, uh, product testing uh, for uh, biologics. A lot, of, a lot of biologics can be a million dollars a gram. You don't want to take you know, a liter of this and, and use it for testing. Uh, that can be very, very expensive. Both of these characteristic processes need to be measured and monitored. Defects per million opportunities. This is the number of defects observed in a million opportunities. It's calculated by dividing the number of defects by the number of units manufactured, multiplied by the number of opportunities per unit for each defect, and then multiplying the product by a million. Below is an example for, let's say, tablet picking and sticking defects. Our tablet defects DPM always equal to, well, we had 750,000 tablets manufactured, and there were two opportunities for both picking and sticking, and we got 50 pick tablets. So that's 50 divided by 750 times 2 times a million comes out to 33 defects per million opportunities. No, DPMO is a newer construction for calculating defects rather than as percent defective, which is calculated by multiplying the product by 100 instead. Quality levels have improved enormously uh, over the years and it's no longer convenient to express defects as a percentage, meaning defects per hundred, which is how I started my career. We did calculate in percent 40 years ago. Process capabilities define how well a process fits within its specifications. Process capability is the ratio of the specifications range to the spread of the process. The process spread is measured as six times the standard deviation of the process, and we've talked about this already. So, so there's a calculation once again. You see the specification range is six. <coughs> standard deviation is one, so six times the standard deviation is six. So six divided by six equals one. Again, it's a perfect fit almost within the specifications. Yield is defined as the percentage of products that successfully complete the production process. It's calculated by dividing the amount of product that finishes the process by the amount of product that started the process. So percent yields is the output uh, divided by the input multiplied by 100. Keep in mind that this does not mean that all products are necessarily free of defects or did to not require rework. It simply means that the products completed the production process and are presumed to be good enough to ship to the customer. So here you see 100 pounds of raw materials going into the process and you get 90 pounds of finished product out. <coughs> the yield is then equal to 90 pounds divided by 100 and for percent yield times 100 is 90 percent. Throughput yield. This is the number of good units coming out of a process divided by the number of units going into that process over time. So here we have a packaging line with 1,000 blister packs <coughs> going in and 900 blister packs coming out with 100 defects. So throughput yield is 900 blister packs divided by 1,000, which is 0 0.9. Rolled throughput yield. This is the product of all the yields for a total process. And it looks something like this. So here we have three processes, and we have a throughput yield of 0.9 for the process, first process, first step, and 0.85 and 0.9 uh, for the last one. Looks pretty good, right? So almost 90% almost for all three of them. Well, what is the actual th rolled throughput yield? As these all multiply across, the actual total th rolled throughput yield is only 69%. Although the individual yields for each process appear to be good, the roll throughput yield is quite poor, 70%. And this is a very serious Six Sigma opportunity. Just because you have 90% at various steps, each time you're losing 10%. And this adds up over each step. Sigma. Sigma is the same as the Z-score, which we will talk about later in the course, and is directly related to process capability. The Sigma value can tell us the number of defects we can expect from the process. It's well known. Some business processes require a minimum sigma, sigma level. So the sigma level, since it's, uh, the, the defects are, are well known, is a nice easy number to, uh, uh, to give to a management person so he understands exactly where he stands. So in this case, you see uh, that the, uh, the process uh, uh, fits well within the specifications, and you see that this process capability is 2.0, which is equivalent to a six sigma, which is the goal. Uh, note on the graph that there's about three standard deviations on either side of the process uh, outer, outer limits, meaning there's plenty of room uh, buffering uh, to keep the process from running outside the specifications and therefore no defects.